So we do get asked frequently about the role of face shields, these clear plastic barriers uh, that uh, allow you to uh, communicate and, uh, and potentially uh, make it safe to uh, be without a mask. The data, however, is quite convincing that a face shield is better than nothing, a mask is more effective than a face shield, and the combination is more effective than both. And the reason being is that the mask is extremely protective to trap micro particles, micro droplets that either you emit as a result of coughing, sneezing, or even speech. Uh, and the face shield is very effective in trapping particles that could be aimed in your direction that could land on your eyes or on your face and ultimately infect you. However, the use of both is the best that is available, which is why some of our faculty uh, are using a combination of both in the teaching setting. However, there are circumstances that just a mask is acceptable, and that's typically in a lecture format in a large classroom. So in a de-densified classroom environment, if the faculty member is more than six feet and probably more than 10 feet from the first row of students, a face shield is probably a reasonable thing to do. And the reason being is one, you have the benefit of distance. Secondly, that sometimes there are students that are impaired and they need the visual cues of being able to watch your lips as you communicate. And we want to be sure that we accommodate as many of our students as possible. Sometimes there are not only disabilities, but there are language barriers that can get in the way. And so for all of those reasons, uh, we've developed some guidelines, so please go to the website and there's a whole section on face shields in the classroom.